Slave One. Slave One is the starship owned and operated by the bounty hunter named Boba Fett. Slave Two. The hypermodern attack vessel Slave Two is the bounty hunter Boba Fett's new ship. He has been seen with the vessel since his escape from the great pit of Carcoon. Snowspeeder. The Incom T-47 airspeeders, especially adapted to the hostile environment of the ice planet Hoth, were called snowspeeders. These small, wedge-shaped airspeeders were heavily armored and highly maneuverable, redesigned to provide air protection to the rebel base on Hoth. A forward-sitting pilot and a rear-facing gunner crewed each snowspeeder, employing two forward heavy laser cannons and a rear-mounted harpoon cannon. Speeder bike. Small, one-person repulsor land vehicles, speeder bikes move at incredible rates, making them perfect for use as scout and reconnaissance craft. Four directional steering vanes extend from the front of a speeder bike on twin outriggers, providing a high degree of maneuverability. The pilot directs the bike with elevation and maneuver controls located in the hand grips. Two rocker pivoted foot pads regulate speed while controls at the forward end of the saddle are for parking, weaponry, communications, and energy recharging. Military speeder bikes, like those used by the Empire scout troopers, have armor plating and are armed with blaster cannons. Spice. A product of the labor mines of Kessel, spice is a controlled commodity. It makes a popular cargo for smugglers because of its high profit to volume margin. Star Destroyer. The colossal wedge-shaped capital starships called Star Destroyers are perhaps the most feared and most instantly recognizable vessels roaming the space lanes. The two newest classes of Star Destroyers, the Imperial Class and the Super Class, are found exclusively in the Imperial Fleet. An older model, the Victory Class, dates back to the end of the Clone Wars and can be found in service among system defense and large corporate constabulary fleets. The Imperial class Star Destroyer is 1.6 kilometers long and bristles with offensive weaponry. Turbo lasers and ion cannon batteries create wide ranging fields of fire around the wedge and a complement of TIE starfighters are carried within its hangar bays to add even more punch. Defensive shield generators, tractor beam projectors, and sophisticated sensor arrays round out this capital ship's exterior emplacements. An Imperial Star Destroyer also carries dropships, landing barges, shuttles, repair vessels, deep space probes, an assortment of specialized droids, field artillery weapons, walkers, ground assault vehicles, modular building units, soldiers, and Imperial Stormtroopers. The Superclass Star Destroyer, the newest model in the fleet, is 8 kilometers long, dwarfing even the massive Imperial Star Destroyer. Though the Super Star Destroyer is approximately five times as powerful as its smaller predecessor, the few currently in service are not primarily used as combat starships. Instead, the vessels are used as command ships, guiding fleets, and serving as headquarters from which to conduct planetary assaults and space battles. Lord Darth Vader's Executor was a Super Star Destroyer. Lyra Wessex, daughter of the engineer who designed the earlier Victory Star Destroyer, was the driving force behind the Imperial model, bristling with 60 turbo laser batteries, 60 ion cannon batteries, 10 tractor beam projectors, and a full wing of TIE fighters, 72 starfighters, in its hangar bays. The Imperial Star Destroyer is a flying weapons platform. While the Empire cannot hope to garrison every system in its control, it can project its might anywhere within a short period of time by using combat starships, such as the Imperial Star Destroyer. An even newer superclass Star Destroyer was built to serve as the reborn Emperor's flagship six years after the Battle of Endor. This solid black model is 16 kilometers long and covered with weapons and defense. Stormtrooper the Imperial Shock Troops, who are totally loyal to the Emperor, are called Stormtroopers. Unlike regular Imperial soldiers, Stormtroopers wear white and black armored spacesuits over black body gloves. They are deployed to neutralize resistance to the New Order. 
and placed aboard Imperial vessels to be used as first strike forces and to make sure lower officers stay true to the Emperor's vision. Trained to obey orders, stormtroopers will rush into combat without a thought for their own safety. If the Emperor issues an order, stormtroopers will drop everything else to obey it. Their armored spacesuits provide limited protection against blaster fire. The 18 pieces that make up the outer shell create an enclosed, self-sustained environment. The two-piece body glove controls body temperature. Stormtrooper officers wear shoulder poltroons. Totally loyal to the Empire, stormtroopers cannot be bribed, seduced, or blackmailed into betraying their Emperor. They live in a totally disciplined, totally militaristic world where obedience is paramount, and the will of the Emperor is absolute. In addition to the main Stormtrooper legions, a number of special units have been assembled to operate on the varied worlds and climates of the Empire. To deal with the problems on ice-covered worlds, cold assault troopers are elite frozen environment combatants, also called snow troopers. These Imperial soldiers wear the basic white and black armor equipped with powerful heating and personal environment units terrain grip boots, and breathing masks, second only to the Royal Guard. The elite Zero-G stormtroopers, or space troopers, are trained to operate exclusively in space. When the Empire needs to launch an assault on a spacefaring vessel, space troopers are sent in to do the job. Each trooper wears full-body armor capable of withstanding the rigors of hard vacuum. This armor functions as a personal spacecraft and attack vehicle with sensor arrays, magnetic couplers for adhering to ships, repulsor lift propulsion units, and a wide assortment of weaponry. Space trooper armor makes these troopers fearsome to behold. Two meters tall and twice as wide as a normal stormtrooper, space troopers can unleash a devastating barrage on their targets. Concussion, gas, and stun grenades, miniature proton torpedoes, blaster cannons, and laser cutters are standard ordnance. Specially designed assault shuttles carry space troopers into combat. Scout troopers are lightly armored, highly mobile stormtroopers are usually assigned to Imperial garrisons. They use speeder bikes to control perimeters, perform reconnaissance missions, and scout enemy locations. To assist them when traveling at the high speeds speeder bikes reach, scout troopers wear specialized helmets equipped with built-in macrobinocular view plates, and sensor arrays. These feed into computers that analyze terrain features instantaneously to help the scouts navigate at high speeds. They also map the areas they explore, producing a continuous record of each mission they participate in. Scout troopers wear lightweight armor and padding over a black body glove and carry small automatic blasters. Max Rebo Band the Max Rebo Band, an odd collection of alien jizz whalers, often performed exclusive engagements for the crime lord Jabba the Hutt. The band was made up of Max Rebo, Droopy McCool, and the singer Sai Snoodles. Droopy McCool, a kidonak, is a member of Max Rebo's band. The chubby, comical musician plays a variety of wind instruments. Sai Snoodles the alien Sai Snoodles was the lead singer for Max Rebo's jizz wailing band of musicians. Bipedal, with spotted yellow-green skin and long, thin limbs, Sai sang through a mouth that was positioned at the end of a foot-long protrusion extending from the lower portion of her face. Sai and the rest of the band performed for Jabba the Hutt's court just prior to the crime lord's death. Tabana Gas the rare gas extracted from Bespin's atmosphere and processed at Cloud City is called Tabana gas. Hot air rises through Cloud City's unipod, sucking in the gases that float in Bespin's atmosphere, including Tabana gas. Tabana gas is processed and spin-sealed in carbonate for transport off-planet. When cohesive light passes through Tabana gas, its energy output is multiplied fourfold. In this way, Blasters and other energy weapons produce greater energy yields, and therefore greater amounts of damage. When Tabana gas is used as a conducting agent, personal weapons cannot withstand this extra yield, but ship-mounted blasters benefit greatly from the use of Tabana gas. 
TIE Fighter. The main combat starfighter used by the Empire is the TIE Fighter. Fast, maneuverable, and apparently endless in number, TIE Fighters are deployed from bases and capital ships, as they have neither the range nor the capability to travel great distances on their own. A short-range patrol and attack craft, TIEs serve the Imperial fleet very well. Twin ion engines provide the propulsion for these fighters, which are controlled by a single pilot. At the height of the Empire's military buildup, when resources were plentiful and supplies were nearly unlimited, the need was felt for a deep space starfighter that was cheap to make, quick to produce, and relatively powerful, especially in large numbers. The TIE fighter was the result. Armed with two laser cannons, but lacking any sort of combat shields, TIEs were designed for use as reconnaissance craft, perimeter defense ships, and ship-to-ship -ship combat vehicles. The distinctive hexagonal solar panel wings that jut from the spherical command pod gather light and convert it into energy. That powers the propulsion and weapon system. In addition to the basic TIE fighter design, a bent wing interceptor and a double pod bomber model are also found in Imperial service. Darth Vader even had his own custom-built tie for the occasions when he wanted to engage in ship-to-ship -ship combat with the rest of his forces. Designed and built by Sinhar fleet systems, the TIE Fighter comes in a variety of special assignment models. The original TIE Starfighter was developed while SFS was still Republic Sinhar systems. The upgraded TIE was produced after the company came under the direct control of the Imperial Navy. The TIE, slash 1N, is the standard fleet-based TIE fighter. It carries a separate power generator for the laser cannons. The TIE, slash RC, is equipped with extensive sensor and long-range communications packages to assist it with its reconnaissance duties. Built for fire control duty, the TIE, slash FC, transmits precise targeting information back to its fleet. Finally, the TIE slash GT features an enlarged hull for carrying torpedoes and bombs. It is usually used as a ground support vehicle, though it is gradually being replaced by the TIE bomber. Every Star Destroyer carries a complete wing of TIE fighters. A wing is made up of six squadrons, and squadrons are divided into three fleets of two ships each. Therefore, a TIE squadron has 12 starfighters, and a TIE wing totals 72 starfighters. After the Battle of Endor, the Imperial resources were no longer as vast and limitless as they were during the height of the Emperor's rule. The Imperial remnants began adding shields to TIE fighters. The starfighters were no longer expendable. For the Empire to continue as a viable force, it had to conserve its weapons of war much the way the Rebellion had once done. Under Grand Admiral Thrawn, for example, the success of a TIE fighter mission was determined by how many of these ships returned, as well as by how well the objective was completed. Tractor Beam A tractor beam is a modified force field that can immobilize and move objects caught within its influence. An emitting tower, called a tractor beam projector, produces the beams, though range and strength are determined by the power source that runs it. Tractor beams serve a number of important functions. In spaceports and hangar bays, tractor beams help guide ships to a safe landing. Salvage vessels, cargo haulers, emergency craft, and engineering ventures all employ tractor beams to assist them in their jobs. On military ships, tractor beams can be used to capture enemy vessels or simply hold them in place while offensive weaponry can be brought to bear. Tatooine. Tatooine, the primary planet in the star system of the same name, is a desert world far from the bright center of the galaxy. Located in the region of space called the Outer Rim Territories, Tatooine is the world on which Luke Skywalker grew up. Twin suns beat down upon the sand-covered world, burning the great expanses of desert and all those who dwell there. The planet is home to Jawas, sand people, banthas, great dragons, human settlers, and assorted aliens who populate Moss Eisley spaceport. The human settlers, most of whom make a living as moisture farmers, live in communities like Anchorhead. Many members of the galaxy's fringe society, such as smugglers, mercenaries, and bounty hunters, use Tantooine as a base.
because of its distance from the watchful eyes of the Empire and other galactic governments. Tauntaun. Tauntauns roam the frozen waste of the ice planet Hoth. Easily domesticated, Tauntauns were used as mounts and pack animals by the Alliance during its stay on Hoth. Thick gray fur protects Tauntauns from Hoth's extreme temperatures, though they cannot survive the brutal nights without finding shelter. Swift and sure-footed, herds of these creatures can be seen running across the plains of snow and ice during the daylight hours. Wampa Ice Creature The Wampa Ice Creature is a terrible carnivorous beast that fearlessly hunts the snow-packed tundra of Hoth. Over two meters tall, the bipedal Wampa has white fur, yellow eyes, and sharp claws and teeth. Wampas carve lairs out of the ice, forming huge caves in which to nest. When they hunt, they can take their prey by surprise due to the natural camouflage provided by their white fur. Wampas never hunt when they're hungry. Instead, they capture living prey and store it in their ice caves for later consumption. Luke Skywalker was wounded by Wampa ice creature while he was patrolling the frozen wastes of Hoth. Wedge Antilles The Corillian-born Wedge Antilles is a starfighter pilot, serving the Rebel Alliance. He's an expert X-Wing pilot, often assigned to the Alliance's most important missions. He was in the X-Wing squadron that went up against the original Death Star battle station at the Battle of Yavin, fighting alongside Luke Skywalker and Big Starklighter. When Luke took over the squadron, Wedge became his friend and one of his top officers. Later, when Luke decided to resign his commission, Wedge took command of the group. He led not only his squadron, but an entire battle group on the assault against the second Death Star during the Battle of Endor. Wedge accepted the rank of commander after Luke resigned his commission, taking control of the elite starfighter group he and Luke had built over the years. Rogue Squadron was first attached to the Alliance's headquarters frigate. Over the years, the group became the Rebel Fleet's premier squadron. In the five years after the Battle of Endor, Wedge continually turned down promotions in order to stay with Rogue Squadron. He wanted to remain where the action was. He has no desire to step into a political role like the one Admiral Akbar occupies. Wedge finally accepted the rank of general six years after the Battle of Endor, right before the start of the events depicted in the Dark Empire comic book series. Wicket W. Warwick The Ewok named Wicket was the first of his tribe to find and befriend Princess Leia Organa after she crashed a speeder bike and became lost in the moon's great forest. Wicket was influential in convincing the rest of his tribe to aid the rebel strike team that sought to disable the shield generator located on the forest moon. When Leia and the rebels attacked the Imperial installation, Wicket fought at their side helping them gain access to and destroy the guarded facility. Wookiee Wookiees are an anthropoid species native to the planet Kashyyyk. Tall, strong, and covered by soft, thick fur, Wookiees are known as ferocious opponents and loyal friends. The average member of the species grows over two meters in height and has a much longer life expectancy than a human. On Kashyyyk, Wookiees live in cities situated high within giant trees. Though they appear to be primitive in nature, they are quite comfortable with high technology, combining natural features with modern conveniences. The Wookiee language is made up of a series of grunts and growls. They can understand other languages, but their limited vocal ability makes it impossible for them to speak anything other than their own language. Chewbacca, Han Solo's co-pilot and partner, is a Wookiee. The galaxy at large knows Wookiees as lethal combatants with ferocious tempers. From the very beginning of the Empire, the Wookiees, their world, and their colonies were placed under martial law and enslaved to labor for the Imperial effort. Free Wookiees were extremely rare, and few were ever encountered along the galactic spaceways. It wasn't until after the Battle of Endor that the Alliance was able to finally set the Wookiees free. As tree dwellers, Wookiees have wickedly curved claws that pop from hidden fingertip sheaths with the flex of a muscle. With the aid of their claws and their strong limbs, Wookiees can travel through the upper reaches of the great raw shear trees of their homeworld. 
clinging to vines and branches with agile ease. While feared as opponents, Wookiees employ no obvious fighting style. They seem to simply charge forward, arms swinging, shattering whatever they hit with their huge, powerful fists. Wookiees never use their claws in combat, however, as this is considered a serious breach of the Wookiee Code of Honor. X-Wing Starfighter Intercom Corporation's T-65 X-Wing is a small, single-pilot starfighter that measures 12.5 meters from nose to engine block. Those who fly them sometimes refer to X-Wings as snub fighters. With powerful sublight ion engines, a targeting computer, defensive shields, four wing-tipped laser cannons, and a limited supply of proton torpedoes, the X-Wing is fast, highly maneuverable, and extremely well-armed. The Starfighters are also equipped with hyperdrives for light-speed travel. A recessed socket situated on the outer hull behind the cockpit is designed as an interface for an R2 astromech droid. An R2 unit assists the Starfighter's pilot by monitoring onboard systems, performing routine and emergency maintenance, and even flying the craft when circumstances permit. Astromechs also augment the craft's computer capabilities assist with astrogation, and hold present hyperspace jump coordinates. The X-Wing's double-layered wings split open into an X-shape for atmospheric travel, and when the starfighter shifts into attack position, the Alliance to Restore the Republic uses these starfighters. Y-Wing Starfighter The twin-engine, 16-meter-long Y-Wing Starfighter is an old model still used by the Rebel Alliance. It has room for two crew members. One serves as the ship's pilot, while the other handles the ship's offensive and defensive systems. The hyperdrive-equipped starfighter is armed with two forward-mounted laser cannons, a rear-mounted twin-ion cannon, a limited number of proton torpedoes, and a droid interface socket. It has combat-rated deflector shields, and its rugged construction allows it to take a considerable amount of damage before its systems fail. Yavin. Yavin is a gas giant planet in the Outer Rim Territory star system of the same name. Numerous moons orbit the planet, including the fourth moon, which once served as the location of a hidden rebel base. This lush, tropical moon features the extensive ruins of a now-dead civilization called the Masasi. The rebels established a base in one of the massive temples, and it was from this location that they launched their desperate assault on the first Death Star battle station. The resulting combat has come to be known as the Battle of Yavin. The Yavin star system has three planets, Fidanil, Stoiketsi, and Yavin. Fidanil is a hot, toxic world. Stoiketsi is probably a large comet that was captured by the system, as it follows an extremely elliptical orbit. It supports no life, Yavin itself is a gas giant with dozens of moons. Yavin 4 is a lush jungle moon with wide rivers and diverse forms of life. Yavin 8 is a mountainous moon with stretches of tundra and many varieties of rodent-like life. Yavin 13 is a desert moon with two forms of intelligent life, the reptilian slith and the mammal-like gerbs. Both are still in the primitive stages of technological development. Yoda. The Jedi Master Yoda lived to be approximately 900 years old before he finally died. For most of those years, Yoda served as mentor and teacher to Jedi Knights. A member of an as yet unidentified alien species, Yoda spent his last years in seclusion, hiding from the eyes of the Emperor on the swamp planet Dagobah. Two of his best students were Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker.